Hi there, today you are joining Jocelyn and me as we make our way to Oxford Market Antiques in Oxford, PA. It had been a little while since we had both been here together. And the first thing that I found when I walked in, this do in the door was this Tonala Pottery Frog. To me, he looks like he it is swimming. It's a flat frog and I thought it was adorable. So I decided to take that and look at the other figurines they had by the front door. I was trying to get this poor poodle's tag. <laughs> I could not pick it up, but it was $16. And then on the top shelf, now looking back at this video, I wish I had picked up this little horse figurine. It was dated from 1980. It was very sweet. I don't believe it had any chips or cracks. I did leave it there. Hopefully next time I'm at Oxford Antiques, it'll still be there and I definitely will pick it up. I decided to move on to the smalls. They have this whole little section of smalls. This little turtle was marked made in Hong Kong. Each of these are $2 a piece. Here was the world's smallest Kokeshi doll. It was very, very tiny. I probably would have picked it up if it had a little partner to go with it, but it was just a single, and I think that would be hard to sell as just one piece, so I left it there. There were some Wade Whimsies, but I knew I had a whole bunch of Wade Whimsies at home, so I left those all on the shelf, and I'm looking to see if there's anything else that I need to pick up. Next, I moved to the case, onto the case, and there were these little figurines, and these were made in Norway. The little girl is marked made in Norway, and Jocelyn ends up picking these up for herself. I thought they were very cute and happy looking. And then in another little area, they had these dolls tucked into a mirror. I thought these were very sweet. It was kind of a neat little display just to stick the little vintage dolls in the mirror. And then in one room, they have a lot of glass and there was this very, very large, heavy paperweight or glass orb. That was 34. I thought that was really neat. And then back here, this is an example of Bolacante controlled bubbles. Some of the bubbles aren't perfect, but the ones that are perfectly controlled usually are made in Murano and then I thought this was really neat look at this doesn't that kind of look like an eye like an eye of a storm it was a neat shape it was very very heavy it was only $18 but the sheer weight alone for shipping I decided to leave that for somebody else who doesn't have to ship it <laughs> and here is a look at the other glass pieces they had I thought this frog sitting on the shelf was very adorable and I really like the looks and the graphics on this vase. This is an armored Tonala duck. I believe it's a Tonala duck, um, but the tail was crimped. So I did leave that there. I've sold those in the past. And then I like how they display the glass in the window. This section now that we're in is $4 or two for seven. And I thought that pig was very sweet. I believe that you put it on the edge of a planter and it had no chips, so I decided to take that with me. And then I was looking at the other smalls. I knew I was going to that auction where I was gonna get all of the figurines. So I I just, I knew I was gonna get them. I hadn't been to it yet. But that is why, I, even though I looked at all these little figurines, I knew that I had the potential of getting a lot of figurines that weekend at the auction. So I did leave all of these here behind. If we were going to play the shoulda, woulda game, I probably should have picked up the fish, uh, salt and peppers, and the pandas, but unfortunately I did not. <laughs> I'm so sorry if you're yelling at the screen right now. <laughs> Why didn't you pick them up? I know, but I did not. And these were, this is, this is another area that's the $4 shelf or two for $7, and they had a whole bunch of these little animals, and it was neat because on the bottom, they had it marked what the animal was. I thought they were very sweet, but I didn't feel I needed them. So I just looked at them. And these little vintage figurines were also super cute. I like that one, reminded me of a kind of a Holly Hobby look with a big hat. And then I found another little animal and just the woodchuck and decided to put it with everybody else. This was on the top shelf, but it was so heavy. It was so neat looking, but it weighed a million pounds. 
Then I started to spy these. This is Dragonware, has the dragon on it and the Moriage application there. And then I'm looking for the lithopane. Sometimes when you look them up, they'll have a geisha on the bottom of them. And unfortunately, they did not. So I left those there. I thought these bowls were pretty. And I really liked this. This looked like a sea urchin to me. And that is what it was marked on the bottom. I thought that was very pretty. And it seemed to me that most of the flowers were in good condition. I thought that was pretty. So all of this area here is $4 a piece, or you can group them for two things for $7. So I usually, this is the place I, I usually go to when we come to Oxford Market because you can kind of bundle things together and I feel like I'm getting a deal. <laughs> I thought this, this has to be for decorative use. There is no way that you could drink out of this. It would be so rough on your lips. I think that's for decorative use. I hope it is. <laughs> it's a torture. And then I didn't realize that these were stuck together. <laughs> I felt kind of silly when I went to pick up one and realized they were all permanently stuck together. I thought this was pretty. A little paperweight. And then I realized, oh look, here's another one. <laughs> they had them spread out throughout the, this area here. I like this teapot. I thought it was pretty. I was looking for a mark on it, but it didn't have a mark. Oh, did I say teapot? No, that's a sugar bowl. <laughs> it's a sugar bowl. And then this little girl, it was cute with the bunny. I thought it would be cute for Easter. And then I realized she had been lovingly repaired. So I left her on the shelf with her bunny. This was a nice piece of pottery. But I haven't really sold a lot of pottery in my store, so I don't really want to add to my pottery inventory because it is heavy and takes up a little bit of room. So even though I did like that, it looked like it was marked Gear Canada on the bottom. I did leave that on the shelf as well. But this gourd, this dried gourd cat, I thought this was pretty amazing. <laughs> I thought that was neat. I mean, usually you see these for sale along the uh, country roads here in Lancaster County. They make them into birdhouses. So I thought this was interesting that they had it made into a birdhouse, but it was just a kind of a judgy cat. And then here was some vintage fruit. I've sold it. I've sold it. <laughs> I've sold beaded fruit. I was thinking of the word beaded and I said sold it. And then I thought this was really neat. This is a roll top box or tambour. When I was looking up different um, comparable pieces and the word tambour came up and I had never heard of that word before. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, but I really thought this was a really neat trinket box. It's divided. And then look what I found. Number three, number three of the dragonware. So I really like that box. I thought it was very, very cool. And then this Flamingo, but it's not Flamingos, it's a NASCO product. So the Flamingo must have been a division of NASCO and inside were coasters and they're hard plastic. So lacquer, lacquerware, but they're in really good condition. And I really like the blue and green. I really thought that was very neat and all of them were there and none of them are cracked and the lid wasn't cracked. Sometimes the lids get cracked. So I decided to take the coasters after I looked at the uh, label one more time, <laughs> making sure what it says. And then the little ginger jar caught my attention. It has chrysanthemums. It's old. It has the blue made in Japan sticker on the bottom. I thought it was a nice, pretty size. And then I looked up and there was this one. And I thought, well, this is pretty too. Same age, same blue made in Japan sticker. It had birds on it, and so I decided to take those two with me. And then I'm seeing, are there any more? This little jar I thought was pretty. Seeing if there was a mark on it, but it just had an old sticker. Probably a store sticker, I would guess. And I would think that was a vanity jar. And then these reminded me of symbols, but they weren't. They were clay, but they were pretty shallow for being candle holders. And this was for a really, 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 really tiny bonsai. 
And these were some made in Occupy Japan figurines. I'd like to thank a viewer for sending me a little frog. Kristen from Maryland, thank you so much for sending me the little Occupy Japan frog figurine that holds onto the side of your planter. I thought it was very nice of you to send that to me. I really appreciate it. So sweet. Then I found another ginger jar, but this one was marked $12. But it also seemed like it was the same age as the other ones. But because that one was marked 12, I decided to take the two that I saw earlier. And then I found a lacquer bowl. These are like the lacquer boxes that I find that are made in Japan. And I've never seen a bowl before. So I decided to get that. Now we are moving on to another section of the $7 shelves. I thought the little kitty cat was sweet. And I thought this was neat too. It's three cracked eggs together. That would look pretty if you put flowers in the little cracked eggs. The flowers around the eggs were pretty chipped up, so that is why I left it on the shelf. And then here was an old souvenir trinket box. One of the many things I like about Oxford Antiques is they always have new things. Uh, their stock seems to rotate fairly frequently, so no matter Whenever we go here, I know we don't go here too often, but it's not like, oh, we saw that last time we were here. This is the same. This whole shelf looks the same. It's always new and exciting things to find. I thought this was an interesting piece. I think maybe those were enamel, the flowers. I don't think they were porcelain, if I recall. I thought that was different. I think I'm trying to figure out what it, the flower was made out of. And then I saw this little paperweight. I thought it was very sweet. I like the turtle. I like the little bit of blue in it. It was probably made in China based on the, oh, look what I found, <laughs> based on the base. It's cloudy, but he's in, well, or she, they are in really great shape, and I like the color of it, so I decided to take the turtle paperweight with me. I believe Jocelyn ends up getting this. I think she does. I know she picked it up for sure. I thought that was neat. It was a different looking design of the Tunala Pottery with that design on the around it. Thought that was interesting. I left it for her. <laughs> I'm seeing what else we can find. A wall pocket. I love a good wall pocket. Here was a big dish made in Italy. They had a couple of those dishes. That's the dish on the left. I'm talking about. And then this is more of a Talavera. I would guess this is Talavera pottery, the brighter colors. That dish right there is an Italian dish. And then here's a big bohemian style tray. Had a very pretty design on it. And then they had a lot of Anna Lee dolls sprinkled throughout the store. So I had already found all of the dragonware teacups. So then it made and another hunt to find all the different Anna Lee dolls that they had. I thought this chicken was very, very cool. It was really big. And then I thought this was really neat underneath it. I like the style of the colors that they picked. See, so then I was like, oh, where can I find all the Anna Lee dolls? Here was a, like a gymnastic or a ballerina Anna Lee doll. And then there was a critter Anna Lee. <laughs> and then they had a couple of these. This one was only $9.00. So that made me think that maybe there was some slight damage maybe to the petals because I saw other ones that were a little bit more. And here's another one. <laughs> Isn't that sweet? I like the Annalise. Some people think that they're a little creepy, but I thought that was very sweet. Here was another one. <laughs> they were everywhere. Once I spied that they had them, it was easy to find them throughout the store. This was really pretty. This is Capa de Monte. I recently had picked up some uh, Capa de Monte flower at Goodwill that was in really great shape, but I haven't listed it because I am worried about how to ship it without breaking any of the petals because the petals are so delicate and could easily break. So I'm enjoying the flower that I found at Goodwill and I really thought that yellow flower was very pretty too. I wanted to give you an overview of this little room that they have in the back. They tend to put uh, lamps and dishware and hard goods, glassware, 
some vintage uh, dresses are back here. And now I'm back looking at the $4 shelf. I thought this little cow was adorable. It is marked Made in Japan. I like how it's little heinies up in the air. And it wasn't a shaker or anything. It was just a figurine. So I thought that was really super cute. I wanted to see what this Polly Pig was. There's a Farm Friends. It's the first figurine in the series. And then in the back, I spied this little gnome. And this was made by Goebel. And they, these gnomes do a whole series of different things. They uh, play sports. They read like this one. And this one had a damaged finger, unfortunately. So I think that is why they had put it on the bargain shelf here. That was very cute. I've seen these at antique malls, and it's really cool looking when you have a whole bunch of them together. There was a little lacquer box, but I decided to just take my cow. Giving you a look at the shelves here. And now we are back in the room with the Annalise from before. Here was a Tonala chicken. I thought that would look neat next to that planter. Yeah, you should go back and get that. Across the United States, 1949. That's really neat. Oh, look, George Burns and Gracie Allen's house. Oh, that's so cool. Because I used to listen to radio shows. So there's George Burns and Gracie Allen. They were, he lived to be 100 years old. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And they had a radio show. That's really cool. That is so neat. I love that. That was the neatest thing I have seen in a long, long time, that it was someone's actual scrapbook of a travel across the United States. That is, I just thought that was super neat. It was a little on the high side, which of course it should be. I hope someone who walks in there loves ephemera and buys that and treasures it. So we are going to finish our trip here to Oxford Market Antiques. I want to thank everyone who has already purchased a shirt or a sweatshirt or a tank top. Uh, from Bonfire. I just want a friendly reminder that the last day to order for this limited campaign is April 10th, 2022. I appreciate all the support that you have given me and this will really help my channel grow and spread the word about Flying Pig Thrifts. So thank you so, so much for buying some merch. Coming up next is everything I picked up on this trip to Oxford Antiques. If you have had a hankering for a road trip, check back tomorrow for Jimmy's travel vlog on his trip to Michigan with his dad. I think you'll enjoy the sights of the UP and you won't have to pay for gas. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see ya!